Finally, the moment a couple of you have been waiting for. It's a whole like bing bong jack. Coming to you from an undisclosed location in Duval and St. John's County. The show for Jag fans by Jag fans. You can't have a newcomer come in and steal a show. Here are your hosts, Franklin and Michael D. How do you say it? Dezoba. Welcome to the Jaggernaut Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, kids of all ages, I want to welcome you back to another Jagger Not Podcast. Michael DeZova, yay, with my brother Franklin. Franklin, introduce yourself. Duval. Duval. I had to drop it. If you missed our last show, I gave them a little bit of a wussy Duval because I thought that's what they earned. After watching the first team come out Friday night against the Cleveland Browns, they deserve a real Duval. Frank, you were over here. You were watching the game. What do you think? It was good to see that. I mean, we did talk, we did talk about and preface everything that we said about the how we felt about the first preseason game with the fact that it is just preseason, but you do want to you you do want to come away feeling like you felt. You want to be able to, to, especially this team. You know, if this if this was a team that had a had a, uh, a tradition or uh, was a winning looked season? at, yeah, as what <laughs> had a winning season. Yeah, anything like that. I mean, it or or the roster was just thought of as a can't. You know, like last, we're coming off a year last year where they they looked great. The preseason's tuning up. You don't know what they're doing. Fine. For this sort of roster, for this sort of team, for this fan base, you need to start building a little bit of momentum, even in the preseason. Um, and I think that this helps because uh, although Cleveland didn't play, um, you know, I, I was disappointed in this. It's very difficult to tell. Um, I don't know if they went I went over the roster at all or who was starting in the lineup. There were some Cleveland guys that didn't play. So, but. Regardless of that, a lot of first round or a lot of first uh, teamers for Cleveland did play. Um, and we still had some of our first teamers out, too. So uh, this is what you want to see. You want to see um, they move the ball down the field. Um, there's some things that need to be cleaned up, stuff like that that we can talk about. But, yeah, it makes you feel better uh, to see our ones, for the most part, out duel their ones. It does. Uh, one thing we may want to point out is our uh, backups are getting worked. <laughs> they are getting destroyed by uh, the other teams out uh, backups. So I'm not sure what's going on there. Well, I mean, I can tell you, uh, Luton, Jake Luton, right, is cut. He's no longer a Jacksonville Jaguar. I'm sure yeah. there are a lot of Jaguars out there who are happy about that. I think he's had, what, two or three seasons now? Uh, being a third stringer right. to to put film out there, and most of his film is not very good. The dude has a cannon, but he's just not accurate. Yeah, and that I I don't think he processes the game as fast. Speaking of processing game, does it bother you that Trevor Lawrence didn't process the game as fast as you would like? Taking yep. the point. Yeah. Okay. So the first the first throw to Zay Jones. Remember the thirty two yarder. Yes. Had he put it out there another foot. That might have been a touchdown. There I, a, I wouldn't go that far, but I get your point. It could have been I a said, better throw. Yeah, I said Give him might a shot. Have. Yep, I said might have. Yeah. But had he had he waited to throw a ball a few seconds, Evan Ingram would have broke open in the corner of the end zone, to which he may have found him, right. maybe not. Uh, you know, so there were some things that Trevor could improve on. It doesn't bother me that much. I'm a huge Trevor Lawrence guy. I'll put that out there. I do believe that we found our quarterback. Uh, but this is what – he's not missing throws by leaps and bounds. He was high on one throw. Yeah. I saw two drops. One was from ETN that was a touchdown had ETN caught it. That pro possibly would have been a touchdown instead of a field goal. And had that happened, he wouldn't have played that second series. We would have went away 10, and we still would have been feeling good. 
I thought we moved the ball fine. I'm yeah. not. I'm not taking that. Well, not all of their starters played. Okay, that's true. Not all of ours played. Yeah. So to me, it's about even, and it's too close to call. I know last year we said this when when Cleveland came in and worked us, and we were like, oh, but oh, but you know, we, we didn't play yeah. our starters and blah blah blah. It it was an indication of how the season's going to go. This might be an indication for Cleveland. Cleveland, look out! I don't know a ton about your team. But, man, you, you better hope Amari Cooper is really that good. You better hope Miles Garrett comes in and is the, just a the complete dominant guy that you want him to. You better hope Nick Chubb is that guy, too. Because otherwise, I'm not Three sure. Preseason game against the anyway. Jags is not the Cleveland Browns issue. Uh, no matter what we saw there, that's just them getting Deshaun Watson out there to in a Cleveland Brown uniform. That's their issue. Uh I would, if I'm a Cleveland yeah, fan, that's not I'm positive about, either. Yeah, I, I get that. And and what I would be worried about is they have a great roster and they better hope they didn't just ruin the chemistry by bringing in um, Deshaun Watson. That's what oh. they need to hope because the, and, and, and you know, so that we stacked up well against their team. And what it does show, I was thinking about this, what it does show for the Cleveland uh, front office, I think, is they thought they were just one player away. Like whatever they saw in Baker Mayfield, they thought he's the problem. If we get rid of him and Deshaun's sitting out there, they think that's the guy. You know, it, it goes to show you that the what Internally, they think the same thing that a lot of people outside the Browns organization think, which is that their roster stacked and they're ready to go. And they were one player away and they took a chance. And that might be their that might be their undoing, honestly. So um, but it 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 on to, to where we are is the Jags, it does give us some grounding that this is a good ro roster that they went up against. And even though yeah, some of their first, some of their starters are not playing. A lot of them were, and they, we, we, we worked them. Our, our, our team worked them. So, um, not exactly equal in the sense that we had that preseason game under our belt. They didn't. So, I think that that kind of changes things a little bit. But we take it for what it is. And it, it, one of the things that I jumped out to me, my biggest complaint last year was when we were running the RPO under Herbs, I was upset because I felt like there was no O. <laughs> like, where was the option? Either Trevor was running it incorrectly in that he wasn't making the correct read based off what the defense gave, gives him. So either he's supposed to pull it out, throw it, or he's supposed to pull out and run it, or he's supposed to hand it to the running back. I felt like he handed it to the running back regardless last year for no gain. Like there was nothing there. And there were plenty of times where I was like, why isn't he running it? And I think we had an episode where, um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought I did this, where I went back and I looked at the games where the games where we actually scored well, were games where Trevor had runs, like he actually. That's correct. Had, yeah. Right. Yeah, we did. Remember that one running play where everyone was fooled, even the cameraman, and Trevor ran it for a first down. You remember yeah. that? Okay. Early in the game, that's the type of stuff that we were going to get. The 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 bootlegs, the throwing on the run. That is the creative aspect that you have to have. When you're running an offense, I don't care if it's RPO or anything, you have to get the defense from thinking side to side before you can start going vertical. North and north and south. Or, or, or smash mouth. I mean, you can do all of that. It doesn't matter what order you do it, but you have to get – and that was one of the things last year I felt like we were so the, – the scheme last year was terrible. And so I came away thinking, yes. This is what we hope. Feels that way. Will, will it be that? Not sure. But we've got a Doug Peterson-led offense who took Carson Wentz and made him into somebody. He took the Eagles 
Bowles came in. He played. I mean, it, this is a workable offense. This is a guy who knows what he's doing. There's a lot of guys in, in our front office. McCoy, um, you know, you got Taylor, who's the brother of the guy who just the coach who just went to the Super Bowl. Um, so you've got a lot of you've got a lot of heads that could be good that are forming an offense scheme philosophy that I think could favor Trevor's um, skill set. And that's what I came away thinking. He does have to get a little bit. I would like to see better accuracy from him, even even on the touchdown throw. I kind of felt like that was behind uh, Evan. Yeah, you know, yeah, was, it, it was. He had to turn around and catch it, and maybe that's what you got to do because apparently Ingram miss, doesn't catch good passes. He catches the really ridiculous ones and and drops the easy ones. So maybe you just throw it away from him, make it a circus catch, and he'll catch it. I don't know. I'm kind of being funny there, but well, that's not what you want to spec. But if your quarterback's good enough to recognize, I need to throw it slightly above this dude. <laughs> yeah. Then he's yeah, a damn good. He's an that's even cool. better quarterback than I'm giving him credit for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's wishful thinking on my part, but it is preseason. He's still a young quarterback with everything that went he went through. I, I like what I saw, nonetheless. Me too. I like the fact we were moving the ball. Um, I thought that we were really smooth at times. I thought that the passing. I love the created the creativeness. Um, I thought our defense did well. Uh, we didn't get to Deshaun Watson, but I thought we put enough pressure on him oh, to hurry yeah. some stuff up. I Trayvon, thought our run, Trayvon looked really good again. I thought our, I thought our runs looked active. Yep, I thought our runs were really good. We had some good run fits in there. Devon Hamilton played better. Uh, Roy Robinson Harris showed up. I like to see that. So that's that was all positive. That was all good. Yes, we got worked by their twos and threes but I'm not going to harp on that. Twos and threes don't win you championships. Twos and threes, hopefully, barring injuries, don't come into the game that much. So I'm not, I'm not really going to worry about twos and threes. I like the game. I was fine with it. Uh, it was much better than last year. Last year we got worked, and we got worked again, and then we got worked again, and, man, we got worked all into the season. Well, it's helpful It's helpful to compare, in, in my opinion, it, it, because last year was so bad, and it wasn't just the all, all turmoil and stuff. It was ph philosophically that the team was a bad team last year, and there were certain things that jumped off the page at me at being bad. The, the offensive scheme was bad. The false and, starts. Yeah, I mean, the all that yep, stuff. The mismanagement. So that, that goes to coaching, which pointed to it internal issues. But this, like I said, the philosophy and the scheme just was terrible. And then the skill position wide receivers, you're not going to convince me that we didn't have the slowest wide receivers in the league last year. And then they dropped the ball as well at maybe the highest rate in the league, or at least one of the highest rates in the league. Now, what we saw um, on Friday was Zay Jones, um, Evan Ingram, and Christian Kirk wasn't even out there. So the guys that they brought in are instantly better, <laughs> instantly in the offense, instantly yeah, doing if they, things if that they we catch didn't the see ball. last year, which goes to show what I thought I saw, which is a slow – as molasses wide receiver core in a bad scheme. They weren't scheming anybody open, and they dang sure weren't going to get open on their own, and we were throwing a rookie quarterback into that crap. So that gives us hope. I agree. That gives us hope. All right, Frank. One player who is major roster and one player you would cut. I don't know, man. Um, let me see if I can – like, is it – I don't think there's any question about the roster to a certain extent. I mean, it's weird as the, as weird as it is. I don't know. There's no surprises necessarily. Um, it, it would be. You're right. There are very few starting, starting battles, like a battle between two guys who could win the starting job. But that's not really what this question is. It's more about who do you think, who do you think is playing above what, what they are or looking good. For all I care, man, you could have said Zay Jones. Zay Jones yeah. was a question mark. 
he came out and he, he looked good. He looked right. fast. He looked crisp. To me, who made the team? Zay Jones. Zay Jones made well, the roster. That's okay. my guy. I'll give it to you. So give, give me Chappelle Russell. Because you like Chappelle he Russell. started over Quarterman. And I didn't see I didn't see it as negative, you know. Um, now, does that mean Quarterman's cut? I'm not saying that. I mean, I said it last week because you forced me to, you know, you said I was cut. I, I mean, I was cutting somebody based on that game. I would cut Quarterman, but that's not obviously how you do it. Um, but so with the fact that Lloyd, Devin Lloyd is not back yet, um, you know, you need you need linebackers. So I'm kind of guessing if 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 you got Muma out there and um, Oluka, Olukan is not back, then you put Russell in there. Well, that tells me he's making the team. Before Le Oluakon started, so he started out there with Muma. So it was him. Oh, did Luka. he? I thought yep. Russell started. No, sir. He came in later, but he did come in before Shaq Quarterman. Okay. I, somehow I missed that. So, yeah, I mean, that could be Foye Oluakon. We, you know, we had a much better run run defense. So maybe maybe he's your starter. I don't know. Who are you cutting? Anybody look bad to you? Oh, uh, well, Jeff wasn't it? Jeff Cotton that had that ball ripped out of his hand. It was. It was my guy, was Jeff boy, Cotton. Right? That was my boy. Why are all your boys sucking, man? Well, I, sometimes it be that way. Maybe I I'm mean, not such a good evaluator. And I see why you like the guy. But, I mean, we're also talking about we only have so many people. I, the LaVisca's making the team, I think, unless they're trying to trade him, which is one of the th- – like, is he really hurt? Like, why does he have a mystery injury? Like, nobody's talking about this. Maybe they're trying to trade LaVisca. I mean, yeah, I don't know. Possible. I don't want them to. I, I think he could fit very well into this scheme. I think Peterson's very creative, and LaVisca looks like the type of guy that could be used Maybe he's legitimately hurt. I don't know, but it's just something to think about. If he gets traded, then all of a sudden you got a wide receiver spot open up. If not, I think even that's kind of set. You know, I think Treadwell makes the team. Um, I, I'll tell you who I'm cutting, Gregory Jr. Where's he? He's a draft pick. I, I don't know. Has the guy played? Maybe, or, or maybe he's a shutdown corner when he's out there. He's so glued to his man, and I don't know. I'm not. I'm not being. I'm not joking. I don't know. He's so glued to his man that the quarterback doesn't even attempt to throw to him. So you don't hear his name. That could happen with corners. Uh, I don't know, uh, but I haven't heard his name like since we drafted him. Literally, I don't know. Is he still on the team? I don't know. Um, Monteric Brown. I saw him make another play, so he's making a squad in my in my mind. Uh, maybe Junior's not, and he goes on the practice squad. So, I had two guys that I that I was cutting, and most Here. most likely, I know one of them definitely is not being cut. It's a bit metaphoric. <laughs> Don't do Chase hey, on, man. It is Chase on's one of them. You know what? Logan said Chase on had a good game. Lo- he did. But he wasn't better than the other guys. Okay. That's what I'm saying. Like, we know what he is. See, you you say this about Jawan Taylor. We know what he is, so Walker Little should start. Okay? We know what Chase on is. We know it. And we know he's not worth the money we're paying. He's a tweener. That's his biggest problem. I can't stand those guys. And on a 3-4 defense, you should be able to, to – to, yes. He would not fit at 4-3 at all. And we yes, you are correct. Hybrid and all this stuff. And still we up. have saw. We have saw. If if we have saw enough of Jawan Taylor, he's a good give, special teams guy, though. To give that spot, no, he is not. I heard give, he is. To give, give that spot to Walker Little, then we have seen more than enough of Caleb on to trade him. I'm not saying cut him. I'm saying trade him. Yeah, but. You know, here's my other guy. I wouldn't be against that, but it, you have to have here's, a great here's my other guy, and this one's going to suck, and I'm probably going to get a lot of heat for this, and we're going to discuss this later on. Devin Lloyd. What? You're going to cut Devin Lloyd? It's it's metaphoric. It's just <laughs> it's metaphoric. Of course I wouldn't cut him. Of course okay. I wouldn't cut him. But gotcha. where is he? Gotcha. He's not helping your defense. 
I understand that he had that he pulled his hamstring. I get it. Right. But what's made me upset is people are automatically putting him in the starting lineup above Muma because he was a higher draft pick. Okay. He was. So was Derek Harvey, who was garbage. So was Terry on Bryant, who was garbage. I can go down the list of first rounders who were garbage. I'm not saying, I'm not saying that we should cut him. What I'm saying You're is cutting Muma, him the starting lineup. Muma, yes, Muma has earned the right to me for this yeah. to be a full-blown competition between Lloyd and Muma for that job. Right. That's yeah, all I'm I, saying. In fact, I, in my mind, Muma's the starter. I don't know how. So why is it Lloyd? Because he was drafted higher? Because he had the higher had, pedigree coming an out? He awesome Duval. And... I, I love the dude. I really yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I mean, as a fan, I don't care which one starts, as long as it's the best one. Right. The one you oh, have the most confidence in. And how can you have confidence in Lloyd right now? You just the can't. guy hasn't played in an NFL game right. at all. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. Anyone who says that, I don't think they're looking at it properly. You can't just go – because you go, oh, he's a better player. Well, he's slightly better. He's slightly well, better. No, how do you know? He was better in I'm college. I'm talking about prospective player in regards to when okay. they were drafted. Yes, so, he was a better prospect. Yeah, because if, the only reason why you would say you'd have to start Lloyd is because he's the higher draft pick. But the only reason why he was a higher draft pick – I mean, he, was, he wasn't that much higher because they – they ended up checking that box and Muma was there and they drafted him anyway. So they're like, they, that, that tells me in their minds, he was close to that. Muma was close to Lloyd in regards to their, um, uh, you know, score or however they do it, because you don't draft, you don't double up on that position unless it's BAP, which means he was clearly the best available player Muma on the board. They thought so much of Lloyd they drafted. They they traded they up. They came to up to get him. And they thought so much of Muma that they drafted them after they traded up. So they're like, they must have thought BAP for both of these guys. That means they cannot be that far apart it, to the front office in regards to their pers- prospects on the field. So if one's injured and the other's not, it's a, it's not even a, a – a, And, and that, that's right. Muma. And that's all I'm saying. We have done Lloyd this needs before. To get in there and prove one with we have, the yes, other. and we have done this before where because of where somebody's somebody got drafted, they are automatically wheeled into this starting caliber. They don't have to earn it. And I'm completely against that because that is the exact same road we have gone down and look where we are. 17 years of garbage. Yes, I like Lloyd. I really do. He's got a great do ball. He looks like he can ball. Sweet. And I'm not sold on, on Muma because Muma, uh, who watched the University of Montana? Did anybody? No. I barely saw Utah. I think I saw Utah and one Muma game. looks fast. Muma looks fast. He looks powerful. He, I, he's taking bad angles, but that's rookie stuff. He's going to do that. And again, all I want, all I'm saying is that Chad Muma has earned the right to make this a legitimate open competition that's it right if lloyd can't get in there because he hurt his hamstring well sorry lloyd maybe there's always next year well i don't know what to tell you well it's just like the way that i look at it when it comes to Jawan taylor i mean okay i feel bad that he hurt his hamstring and got off to a bad start and gave all that time to walker little but here's where we're at where we're at is we've got a guy like what is this uh Taylor's fourth or fifth year? I don't even and he's this if you grade them on the field from what we've saw this year, the best you could say for Taylor is he's the same skill set or the same grade, or you know, he's he's competing against little. There's no difference between the two. <clears throat> if that's the case, you've got a guy who who converted from left tackle to right tackle and is a young player, and he's already the same skill level as somebody who's been playing for four years. What does that tell you? He's going to get better. That's your guy. And he's better at pass blocking. Uh, Clearly, to me, he seems better at pass blocking. Okay, and I'll agree with you on pass blocking, but my understanding, the the word is, is Jawan Taylor's better at run blocking. Fair enough, but guess what? 
they're trying to figure out whether Tyler Shatley is better than Ben Barch over there at the left guard. That's I'm true. thinking, well, shoot, man, put put Taylor over there at the guard. If he's this great run blocking guy, man, that you know that could kill two birds with one stone. Then you got Barch and Shatley as your swing guys in the back who couldn't quite because these are two guys. What you're saying is if Barch and Shatley are battling each other. No one's grabbing that job. Nobody's grabbing it. So Correct, if they yeah. love Taylor to that in that respect, he's the run big physical guy, but he doesn't quite have the same angular. He's not as long. He doesn't have the same quickness that Little has. And, and think about it this way. Which is more important? As much as I want to run the football, protecting Trevor is the most important thing. So put you know, you kill two birds with one stone. I'm, I'm, I wonder if we don't see that maybe take place. And we it, still uh, might. We do. We definitely still might. And think right, about right. this. Let me ask you. Did you, you say who you're cutting? Did you say who you're cutting? Uh, yeah, I said Gregory Jr. Okay. And and here's the thing too. Think about this way: the the um offensive line run play, the running right right now isn't the greatest. Yeah, I've noticed, right? I noticed so, that too, yeah. Maybe maybe putting Taylor over there gives that – because, well, what would you think about ETN since we're on the subject of – I thought um, I thought ETN had one really good run, and then I think he's got to adapt to the NFL. I thought, I thought he may have saw some things that weren't technically there, and then I thought he had a, a – I thought he kept trying to get outside. Yeah. When it's like, dude, look, you're fast, man, but this shit isn't Clemson. Yeah, he didn't have the angle. You, you can't run backwards. To, you know, you're not that fast. Right. Like, this ain't Clemson. You are going to have to just sometimes play there, go the way it goes, wait for your blocks, and then pop it. Now, if this, there are, go ahead. This, this highlights to me James Robinson. Because this is the, and 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 there's a role for both guys on this team, and this is something you're going to deal with with ETN. You're gonna you're gonna you're you're gonna get those plays where he could have gotten four yards, but he lost a yard instead right. because he tried something else. But then he may pop it for sixty and a touchdown, you know, and that's something that Robinson isn't necessarily going to give you, but Robinson. Is gonna give you four yards every time. Like he's just gonna, he's gonna find. That's the thing about Robinson. He his vision is amazing to me. Like when I watch him play, that's that. And so it's a good comp. Hopefully Robinson can get back. Hopefully they can get start. The offensive line can start gelling a little bit more in regards to the run. Um, and you know, and look, if they can. If they can uh, start getting some scheming, you know, like I said, la uh, uh, get get some stuff, get creative from what we saw, that sort of stuff could come. The defense will be a little bit more honest, and then Peterson will run the ball. I mean, he's got he he his uh, Super Bowl um, year. He he had no problems running the football. He had three good running backs, and he used them. Well, good news out of camp is James Robinson participated in some seven-on-seven -seven drills last night. Oh, okay. they, actually, I didn't that they, good. they actually did. Uh, he had the red jersey on, so they couldn't hit him. It was non-contact, but that's positive. I think it's moving in the right direction. And, man, I know James Robinson isn't this savvy vet, you know, that's been there for six years. But I think he's good enough and he knows enough. He's seen enough NFL football that really all you want to do is get him and you feeling good and 100% about getting over his injuries. And he'll take it from there. Now, whether that's in week three, whether that's in two weeks, it's hard to say. They're about to close down camp. That's another thing that's astonishingly. I'm like, closing camp? We just heard you guys hit in one practice. So, yeah, I will say this. If you don't know, this Saturday is the game to watch. Why is it the game to watch? Because this one is the dress rehearsal for what it will look like come the regular season. 
Might That's get a one. So we should get a full half. Full half. Almost and then a full come half. Out yep. After halftime for maybe a drive. That now I don't know about that, but Peterson said he would like to see the starters well into the second the second quarter, and probably okay. to the half. So usually they they like to bring the starters back out and get that feel for for coming back out after halftime. That's usually what they do. But yeah, I, I don't know. I, maybe Peterson's always done it differently. Not I'm, I didn't follow Philly enough to know. Yeah, I can't say for sure one way or another, but if you're going to watch one game, I think I'd watch this one. I think this one's going to be more like uh, what what week one's going to be. And so then that who are way, you watching this game? What do you mean, me? <laughs> well, I'm watching Chad Muma, you know, because Devin Lloyd might not play. Now, my indication is that he's back at practice. I've heard that. So yeah, if he is, like please, all I'm saying is just, Make it a make it a real competition, a legit competition. I think Muma has played well enough to deserve that. That's all. Um, well, I was other, talking about the Steelers. Oh, Pickens. We could have had Pickens. Pickens is one of those guys a lot of Jags fans wanted. Me too. I was looking at him and I'm like, ooh, this guy, word out That's of camp. Falling, is man. I'm like, what's wrong with this guy, man? Yeah. Dude, I'm telling you. What have I said? What have I said? I watch these guys in college, man. And I'm like, there's certain receivers that in college jump at me. And I go, that's going to be a pro receiver right there. I'm usually right about that stuff. And when I watched Pickens of all the receivers I saw, all the Sky Moors and the, the Traven Burts and all this stuff, I said, George Pickens is the one that I want. That's the guy that I look at and go, that is a number one NFL wide receiver right there now. He, again, preseason, he blew up, though. Um, but he's been he's been great in camp, too. This wasn't just a preseason game. What is it about this guy? What, there's character issues, obviously, they say. Man, but that's their headache. So here's the deal, though. Think about this. I don't know the answer to this question, but it would seem to me, is he a starter now? Is Pickens going to be? A starter on and if it he looks is, like he's it. gonna go up against Tyson Campbell or Shaq or Shaq Griffin. Griffin. Shaq Griffin. Yeah. And when's there, and when's uh when's Williams gonna be back? There's another guy. We don't talk about this guy, man. He's we spent a lot of money on this dude, and he's hurt too. I've heard less about him than I've heard about Jay it's Trump. It's weird. Nobody but that's because, him. again, you know why? Because the local media aren't asking about him. Now, maybe they are, and they got tired of hearing, well, it's the same deal as last time. Well, maybe you should just tell us what the same deal is. What is that? Is it is it mid-August? Is it late August? What What's he dealing with? Yeah. Well, and that's the thing, too. They can only give you so much because the team will only say so much. And – you know, this is a free agent, so he's he's got years under his belt. You know, they don't. Does he need the preseason like a rookie? No. You know, he doesn't need it like somebody like Trevor Lawrence, who's a young player, or like uh, Lloyd. That, but you know, it's still it's like it's kind of getting worrisome at this point because, you know, this is the guy that is supposed to be. They've invested a lot, and we're seeing guys that they brought in. We finally uh, saw uh, Fadukasi out there, and uh, all of a sudden the defense looked a lot stouter. So hopefully that's a sign of something uh, of a good investment. Finally saw Olukun, like you said, out, out there. So mm -hmm. uh, we need to see our free agents kind of out there. So whether Williams plays or not is also I, something we Yeah, I have not heard anything about Williams. And it's weird. Playing. Like nobody's even like you said, nobody's even asking. Yep. Uh, is Williams gonna play? I mean by the by chance, you know. I don't know. I guess at this point, thank you, Trey Herndon, for sticking around. You've looked very well in camp, by the way, and yeah. what we've seen out of you. So we as the Jags fans appreciate you. But, yeah, so I'm looking forward to seeing Pickens on anybody. Um, I don't know if Najee Harris plays, but if he does, I think it'll be a good test for our run defense. I would like to see Trevor come out and continue to do what he did, find the open guy, deliver the ball. It could be a little high, a little low, 
It doesn't have to be a great pass all the time. But stick it in there and no, make it I a, want catch. a great pass every time. What are you talking about? I want a catchable ball. Sometimes catchable balls aren't great passes. But so yes, catchable balls. Mm, catchable. Just... Catchable. Catchable. Well are you tired, sir? You look no, like I'm, tired. I'm just marveling at your logic. My logic's I'm not right. gonna fault it. It's fine. How many ducks did we see Peyton Manning throw? He threw ducks, but it went where it was supposed to go. It wasn't miraculously it's on called touch, man. I, there's a time and place for touch, man. And 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 Peyton, yeah. Well, you know, Peyton, Peyton um, is in my mind the perfect quarterback that I like to bring up whenever anybody says, "Oh, you have to have an arm." Like, I mean, Pey did Peyton really have a great arm? Trevor no. Lawrence has like twice the arm Peyton Manning ever had. No, but it was good enough. Now well, there you go. It's all you about put, that. You put that together with his smart. with his mind and the fact that the guy watched forty hours of film. Tom Brady, he doesn't know, have the, so. the most amazing. I mean, it's good enough. It's probably a little bit better than than Manning's, but. But yes, also I want to see us run. I would like to see us run the ball. Get the open holes. Going. Yes, open holes consecutive. I would like to be able when we want to run when we want to run to run. I don't want to be one dimensional. So I thought versus the Browns, we were very one dimensional. Yep, we took advantage of it. Yep, we looked pretty decent doing it, but I don't want to be one dimensional. So I'm going to be paying attention to that. Yeah, and it's all about that line blocking too. So that's something to pay attention to. How far, how much of a push do we get on that uh, fewer line? But it should be a good game. Um, it's definitely it should be a good, a good half. first half. The second half, I think Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh's yeah, probably, probably going to. Good point. Yeah. It should be a yeah, first, to me, good, to me. good first half of football. <laughs> yeah. This game's over at halftime. So whoever's winning won the game at halftime. Yeah. Because, uh, because yeah, I think Kenny Pickett and them, I think they're going to come in and I think they're going to win because so far, our backups haven't showed us anything. What I will like to say and what I do want to see is I want to see consistency. I want to see us come out and do similar to what we did yeah. against Cliff. Consistency. Because we had – the only thing consistent we had last year was losing and penalties and poor execution. We started a trend where we didn't have that last week. I want, to, I want that trend to continue because I believe that's positive for us. What about you, Frank? Yeah, no, I can't I can't say it any better than that. I mean, I think it's just a matter of like you said, stop the run. We which we did yeah last uh game and now we need to run the ball. And if we can do that, then you can build on top of that and that go into the season feeling um feeling like you can compete. That's all we're looking for. Woo! And with that, we'll say goodbye. Do oh goodbye, guys. Hit that like, subscribe.